Welcome to the video on AP economics, um, specifically micro and macro. This will um, uh, be present in both playlists. And we're going to be talking about the basics of supply and demand today. And uh, supply and demand is a very common phrase, even outside of economics. Kind of, uh, you know, people that aren't economists use it to kind of reference interactions that people have with. Uh, those that supply the goods and those that you know consume the goods and and there's there's a lot of different thing interpretations you can go but economically we're going to be speaking of this one graph that is very important and will lead you to many successes in everything you do with supply and demand and it's pretty important as as I just introduced it as such so if there are some other videos that I've made on supply and demand that you should go check out. I suggest watching the price determinants, sorry, the um, non-price determinants or determinants of demand. And I also um, recommend watching the video of determinants of supply. Those will help you after you watch this video. So I um, recommend, you know, following that path right after this video. But um, let's dive into the graph. So on in your basic supply and demand, we have demand. Is downward sloping downward sloping that means you know as time elapses or in this case quantity it's uh, moving down down in this fashion now if supply is um, generally it's um, upward sloping meaning it's um, like this right and so if we plot these together supply demand if we plot these together they're gonna end up looking kind of like an X right with supply the upward sloping and demand and the downward sloping now our axes look like that and there we go there's our basic supply demand graph our y-axis is pretty much always going to be price and the x-axis is pretty much always going to be quantity or um, output, and then price can also be exchanged with cost when we get into micro. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just dive into this graph. Let's let's do an example. So let's say we have normal graph, quantity, price. I'll abbreviate with P. Now let's just look at equilibrium right now. What is equilibrium? Well, let's draw our supply and demand. Okay. Equilibrium right now, I would draw like this. I would show that this graph is in equilibrium, meaning supply and demand intersect. And we can draw dotted lines to either axis where they intersect. Where this dotted line hits the quantity, that is the equilibrium level of quantity, which I will denote Q, right? Or sometimes Q1. Where this dotted line hits price. That is the equilibrium level of price. That's what this market has set the price as. I'll do it that as P. Now, things can change. Demand can go up. Demand can go down. Supply can go up. Supply can go down. Which means, you know, in turn, price and quantity can go down. The equilibrium levels of price and quantity. Now, to see what actually shifts supply and demand, go check out my determinants of demand and determinants of supply videos. But right now we're going to talk about what happens when they shift. Let's take a look. Let's say supply increases, like more factories join the market. Actually, let's use the same color that I used before. It's kind of a reddish color. If supply increases, it's going to move to the right. Okay? It's going to be a rightward shift. I'm going to draw little arrows to denote that. And I'm, I'm going to draw a parallel line to the original supply. And I'm going to denote it S prime with that little apostrophe looking mark above it, S prime. Now you're saying, okay, wow, now they don't meet in the same spot anymore. So we have to draw our new equilibrium levels, right? Okay, now it looks like when supply increased, our quantity increased as well. We can't say that those are both Q. We have to denote this as Q prime or Q1 of some sort. Now it also looked like the price decreased, right? So I'm going to denote this price prime, P prime. And I'm going to put an error here to say that decreased, an error here to say that increased. And that's your basis of shifting, okay? Supply increases, 
quantity increases, price decreases. That's something you should memorize, but that's something you should know how to show yourself as well on this graph. What happens if supply um, decreases? Well, you know, it's pretty much supply prime prime. Okay, now let's draw our levels. We'll think it's pretty much the opposite, huh? We have Q prime prime. We have P prime prime. This went up. This went down, right? That's what happens when supply decreases. Price goes up. That makes sense, right? I mean, if you have less people supplying the good, then price is naturally going to go up, right? Because, um, yeah, it just so. Let's move on to demand shifts. Those are not not as bad. I mean, these aren't bad either. The demand shifts are just as easy. Um, also, demand shifts are kind of easy in the sense that. Um, Price and quantity will shift in the same direction no matter what. So um, let's go ahead, and I'm sure you probably have figured that out intuitively by now, but let's move on. I'll draw a new graph for supply and demand and show you demand shifts. Oh, no. That wasn't the best graph, but that's okay. Uh, oopsies. There we go. Okay. Supply, demand. Usually I'll say market up here, MKT. And then we have our price level, PL, quantity, TY. Perfect. Y. Okay, beautiful. Let's not forget our equilibrium price and quantity. Shut the note Q and P. Okay, perfect. There's our market in equilibrium. Now what happens if demand, like look at, again, look at my price determinants of demand, my non-price determinants of demand video. Um, but what shifts demand? Well, if people, let's say this is the market for pizza. And if people like the taste of pizza more, they're going to demand pizza more. So it turns out that the demand for pizza will actually shift outwards. I'll denote this new curve demand prime. I'll put some arrows here. This is all my my tactics of how I go about these exams. And we'll have to draw our new equilib equilibrium levels just like with supply. Now here, since the demand curve is downward sloping, we have that price and quantity both go up, which is very easy. And the same thing, if people start hating pizza, the demand is going to go down. We have D prime prime. And then we have our new levels yet again. We have P prime prime, Q prime prime, and you can see that price has gone down and quantity has gone down. Now those are your basic shifts and how to shift, again, what shifts. Um, look at my determinants of demand, determinants of supply videos. This is just the basics. I'm going to go over one last topic called concurrent shifts, meaning when both supply and demand shift at the same time. They're very interesting, actually. I, I think it's interesting. So. Uh, the best thing to think is um, there's one term that you'll need to know, ambiguous, mean, which means unclear, pretty much. Ambiguous, right? Unclear or unknown, right? Unknown. Okay, so now let's go into our, um, that, that'll pop up in a couple seconds, I'll show you. Let's draw our regular old supply, regular old demand, that was a little... Two flat sloped. Okay, perfect. Don't forget your labels ever. You'll get marked down on the AP exam, and that's just a bad thing to get marked down on. And sometimes they'll mark down for not having your equilibrium levels here. We have quantity and price. Beautiful. Okay, now what do we do? What's a concurrent shift? That means when both supply and demand shift at the same time. So let's say uh, demand for pizza increased. But supply decreased. There was a supply shock. Um, factories had to shut down. Well, that's kind of a bummer, right? Demand is de increasing while supply is decreasing. But let's graph it anyways. Here's our D prime. Because that increased, right? That shifted out. But then here's our S prime. That's shifting to the left, right? S prime. So clearly, from this D prime shift out, clearly, we had a price increase from this original price level, because if we draw the new levels, 
We draw the new levels. This is our new equilibrium. Clearly we had a quantity increase and clearly we had a price increase, right? From the supply shift back, from the supply shift to the left, clearly we had a quantity decrease and we had a quantity and a price increase. So now we're kind of like, wow, what's going on? We had quantity decrease and increase. Well, since we don't know the numbers, we can't actually say what quantity did. Did it increase or, de or decrease? And then, see, our new equilibrium level, the brand new one with the both primes, the S prime and the D prime, that's right here. That's pretty much along the same line, but we can never know unless we get some actual numbers. We won't know if that falls on the same line or if it falls a little negative, if it falls a little positive. The only thing we know for sure is that with the new equi equilibrium levels, price had to go up, right? Now, there are a lot of different examples of this, but for sure we call price went up when supply went down and demand went up. Quantity change is, again, ambiguous, okay? Now, there are other examples. If demand goes down and price and supply goes up, price definitely goes down and quantity change is ambiguous, right? You can just do the inverses. If um, supply goes down, so shifts to the left, while, um, while demand goes down, then price will be ambiguous, but quantity will definitely go down, right? So just a couple examples here and there, and I urge you to practice with these.